We continue this celebratory season of Cary Grant films on Monday afternoon at 5 to 4 with that crazy comedy directed by Howard Hawks, Bringing Up Baby, which produced such a perfect partnership between Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn. And in five minutes, we continue Jan Thrill's powerful film epic, which started with The Emigrants this afternoon on two. The New Land, the hostile environment of North America in the mid-19th century, is where the group of Swedish farmers struggled to settle. But first on two, the news with Jan Leeming. <laughs> The IRA bombed the Christmas shoppers at Harrods. Five are dead, including two police officers, one of them a policewoman. More than 70 people are injured, 17 still in hospital, seriously ill. The car bomb went off at 1.21 this afternoon in a street next to Harrods department store in Knightsbridge in central London. It was crowded with people doing their Christmas shopping. A warning was received and as police approached the suspect car, the bomb exploded, devastating a large area, hurling glass and black smoke everywhere. Clive Ferguson reports. These amateur pictures were taken minutes after the explosion. In response to a telephoned warning, police had gone to the back of Harrods to investigate suspicious cars. One exploded as they examined it. The Christmas shoppers who packed the area looked bewildered, ignorant of the destruction, deaths and injuries the explosion had caused. As the bewilderment turned to shock, the police had to try to instill urgency but not panic to get them away from the area, as more and more police arrived at the scene. As the streets were cleared, many of the less seriously injured were given on-the-spot treatment by police, as yet other emergency services arrived to help the more seriously hurt. The badly injured were taken to various hospitals, one of them St. Stephen's in Fulham. Staff were working at full strength and extra nurses and doctors had to be called in. For some arriving at the hospital, there was the relief of reunion with friends they'd been separated from in the panic at Harrods. Tonight, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner gave details of the bomb warning, a warning designed, he said, to mislead, not help police clear the area. I think it's very evident that um, this message was so famed that it would um, dissipate police resources, you know, uh, mentioning Oxford Street and other premises, and this really is uh, uh, quite a, a usual tactic of the IRA to um, uh, make the response of the... Uh, police, a diffuse one, a number of locations, at only one of which there might be a bomb. That is not unknown in the past. A short time later, Mrs Thatcher arrived at Scotland Yard. She'd been fully briefed on the day's events, then gave her view of what had happened. I think this is even worse than everything one knew previously. It is really wicked. And I said earlier, it's a crime against humanity. It's a crime against Christmas, too. Later, after visiting the injured, the Prime Minister drove to Harrods to see for herself the scene of the IRA bomb that had brought death, injury and fear back to the streets of London. Dublin businessman Don Tidy has had his first full day of freedom after being released from his IRA kidnappers yesterday. Today, Mr Tidy strolled with his family at his Dublin home, looking none the worse for his ordeal. He'd been held in a dugout shelter in woods outside Ballinamore, close to the border with Northern Ireland. The owners of a Spanish discotheque destroyed by fire this morning have been held for police questioning. 79 people died in the fire at the Madrid club, most of them in their teens or 20s. According to survivors, a number of exits were blocked and some fire extingu extinguishers were not working. It's thought the fire might have been caused by an electrical fault. Toxic fumes filled the building and many people suffocated. Others were trampled underfoot in the rush to escape. 
Steve Cram, the world 1500 meter champion, has rounded off a year of success with a wedding. He's married a physical education teacher he's known since they were children in Jarrow on Tyneside. Steve Cram arrived half an hour before the service and as was her prerogative, his childhood sweetheart, Curran Waters, was 20 minutes late, starting fears that her bridal car had broken down. Heavy rain gave the couple more problems and an outdoors barbecue reception was washed out. The groom admitted to some nerves. That's all from BBC Two for tonight. Good night. And here's the weather. Tonight, rain over northern and eastern areas will clear from most places, but there will be some fog and perhaps a touch of frost. In the south, a few showers will continue, mainly near coasts. Tomorrow, the south will become wet and very windy as rain spreads to most places by evening. Further north, it will be brighter than today, with sunny intervals and a few showers. There will still be some rain left over northern Scotland, but much of the mainland should brighten up later. Temperatures will range from 9 degrees centigrade, 48 Fahrenheit, in the southwest, to 6 centigrade, that's 43 Fahrenheit, in the north. Now, on to we continue Jan Thrill's epic film starring Liev Ullmann and Max von Sudoff, which tells the story of a group of brave and adventurous Swedish farmers who left their country in the middle of the 19th century to resettle in North America. Driven by poverty, hunger and religious intolerance, Karl Oscar, his wife Christina and a group of family, friends and neighbours survive the deprivation and discomfort of the long sea voyage sustained only by their faith and hope of what lies ahead in the new land.